Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It is January 4th, our first report of 2024. These are your headlines. First thing, Connecticut Deep has been out stocking sea pharrell and brown trout for the last couple weeks, which is exciting stuff. Also hearing about a lot of big pickerel being caught by largemouth bass fishermen this week. And striped bass continue biting right into the new year. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple news items for you guys. The first one is going to be about those seaforellin brown trout. If you don't know what a seaforellin brown trout is, it's a strain of brown trout that is a lake-dwelling fish. Um, they come from Germany, and uh, they grow to impressive size. The state has been stocking these fish for at least a decade, probably more than that. And um, over the last two weeks, they've been stocking the yearlings, which are one to two pound fish. Um, they put the, them into these 10 ponds here. I got this up on the screen here for you guys. And now they're going to begin putting in some of the broodstock fish. I think they got about 400 broodstock fish. These fish range from five to 10 pounds. And uh, you know, that's a, that's a great fish, adds a little spice to the winter time. I think what they're hoping is that uh, you know these fish will thrive in some of these lakes and maybe start spawning on their own. But for now, they're a great target species for anglers, especially guys looking to you know find something unique in the winter time. Um, that's going to provide some unique action. So definitely check those out. Next up, we have the next installment of Jenny Ackerman's Open Boat. Take it away, Jenny. Hi everyone. Welcome to this week's Open Boat. It's the winter time. Are you bored? Do you miss your stripers? Have you been organizing your plug wall 80 times over and over? Or watching your favorite fishermen on YouTube on loop day after day? Well, if you're in the winter doldrums of boredom, I have some great news for you. Because from January through March, the Fisherman Magazine has been promoting a ton of fishing shows on the website under the calendar of events. There are awesome fishing and boating expos in every single region, New Jersey, Long Island, New England, that you guys should definitely check out. And it'll help you fill in those wintertime gaps you're missing in your fishing season. You can check out new fishing products, you can check out some new features, everything, everything fishing related you can ever imagine. Now, coming up this Saturday for New Jersey is the Wildwood Fishing and Boating Expo. It is the whole weekend, but if you wanted to catch up on some fluke fishing tactics, be sure to stop in on Saturday and watch my fluke seminar where I teach you some tips and tricks, maybe give you some freebies if you show up, and help you guys get ready to catch your doormat fluke the next fluke season. So I hope to see you guys all there. And remember, the Fisherman Magazine calendar events featured on their website is going to be your new best friend to help you get through the wintertime season. So definitely come to these events. And another bonus to coming to these events is you subscribe or renew your subscription to the Fisherman Magazine at said events. You get a ton of awesome freebies such as a $20 Surehold gift card and a four inch eye pop from Tsunami Tackle which is perfect for popping up some back bay stripers, bluefish, and weakfish. So you definitely do not want to miss out on those excellent opportunities. And I hope to see you guys all at the shows. Last thing, of course, is a giveaway, which is ongoing. We're going to give away this prize package right here. And uh, photos have not been rolling in like they were before the holidays, uh, but that's not a surprise. You know, that sort of bridge week between Christmas and New Year's is typically a busy one for people. And uh, just not seeing a ton of photos, although we did get a few. And um, 
you guys know the drill by now, but it's just got to be you and your fish. It's got to show you your face holding the fish. It can't be laying next to your shoe or something like that. And it has to be recently caught. Other than that, it doesn't matter if you caught it on vacation, if you caught it in your backyard, if you caught it in the Housatonic River or uh, you know on a lake somewhere up in Maine. Uh, send them in to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. Give me all the pertinent details, you know, your name, size of the fish, things like that. And uh, we'll get you enter the, entered into the contest and we'll see who wins. Now moving over into the report section here, we'll start things off with the freshwater synopsis. Basically what we've been hearing this week is that the largemouth bass fishing and the smallmouth bass fishing has been a little bit slow. Uh, I was talking to Dan Southwick about it and uh, you know he's still managed to get a couple nice fish like this five pounder here. Uh, but he said that you know he's finding piles of fish but they just had lockjaw and uh, he thinks or he believes that it's because of the... Uh, the moon up in the sky during the daytime. You're going to hear a lot of great bass fishermen talking about that, and uh, it definitely seems to hold true. Uh, so maybe next week, when that moon isn't out all day, uh, the bass bite will fire back up. But in the meantime, uh, bass fishermen find a lot of big pickerel. Um, uh, Dan actually had a fish that was had a pickerel that was over five pounds this week out of the Cape. I heard about a couple other really big ones taken uh, across the region. So the pickerel fishing has been very good. Um, not everybody likes to target pickerel, but they're a great wintertime species. They're very aggressive at this time of the year. Uh, they seem to only get more charged up as the water gets colder. So, you know, if you do it like you do when you go ice fishing, you know, go out, find a weed edge, find a place that still has some green vegetation, especially if it's a little bit shallower, it's going to warm up a little bit easier in this afternoon sun. And, uh, you know, it can be a good spot to find pickerel. You might find some bass uh, patrolling that edge as well. So that's, that's one of the things you guys can do. And then, uh, of course, the trout fishing has just been carrying on. It's just been really good. Um, got another pick from Jeff Sullivan of another five-pound rainbow taken in Rhode Island. Um, heard about some big brown trout taken out on the Cape. And still seeing steady reports coming from Connecticut of trout coming out of some of the smaller rivers. And as the waters continue to sort of recede, um, you know, you're going to start to see more and more fish coming out of the Farmington and some of these other larger rivers that have been more affected by the flooding. Uh, but overall, trout fishing has been exceptionally good. Uh, it's been an afternoon thing. Seeing a lot more guys transitioning to live bait now, too. Um, I think more and more guys have realized just how good this wintertime trout fishing can be. And, you know, you can go throw jerk baits and cast masters and Phoebes, or you can put a couple air bubbles inside a night crawler and pin it to the bottom, just let it kind of float up there. It's a great way to keep your hands in your pockets and still catch fish. Um, but overall, freshwater fishing has been about as good as it can be uh, for this time of the year, except for the largemouth fishing, which has been a little off for the last couple of weeks. Moving over into the regular, the regional reports, um, didn't hear anything from Maine this week. I did get a report from James Jukes, though, so let's start things off with that. Happy New Year, everyone. Just out this morning trying to get my last little open water in a couple of ponds. Made a few stops yesterday. I didn't do well. My buddy Clay uh, did get into a couple of bass himself. Uh, I did hear of pike being caught over the weekend, which is good to hear. So in some of those uh, spots, still producing. I suspect we'll see some carp being caught too as well, but it's slow. Uh, as far as the striper is concerned, I haven't heard or seen or anything of uh, holdovers at all anywhere on the North Shore of Boston. Uh, could be in Boston Harbor somewhere. You got to get out on a kayak, fish those deeper areas. Very slow, uh, but all in all, fishing is still fishing. It's still fun, even when your fingers are numb. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hope everybody can get out on the water, get those last little bits of fishing in before the ice takes over, and then we'll have to wait and see what happens. All right, Dave, that's about it from here. The next place we're hearing about fishing continues to be Plymouth. Uh, Plymouth just, you know, I feel like a broken record, but that area has been been producing a lot of fish and a lot of guys are concentrating on that area so whether it's long and little for trout or it's the bog ponds for bass and pickerel uh, the fishing has been pretty good and we're seeing good sizes of fish coming out of that area 
Uh, shiners have been very popular with the guys uh, fishing these spots. You know, again, you can keep your hands in your pockets and still catch fish, and uh, you got an opportunity to catch some really nice ones. Out on the Cape, same deal. Uh, pickerel bite has been good, trout bite's been good, bass bite's been a little off, and hopefully when that moon sets next week, it'll be, uh, you know, things will pick back up. But overall, uh, I would call the freshwater fishing solid, but not exceptional right now. Um, and if you had to go and get your rod bent, I would go and try to catch a trout on the Cape. I think that'd be your best bet in Massachusetts right now. Uh, inside the canal, the only thing I've been hearing about is mackerel. So I don't know if those last stripers moved out or if I just haven't talked to the right people, but I think maybe the, uh, the last stripers have finally left the canal. So that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island now, uh, all the head boats are pretty much done. You know, we had tog closed up, we've got sea bass closed up, and we've got scup closed up as of uh, December 31st. So. Most of the boats are tied to the dock now and the rods are hung, so you're not going to be hearing about any, uh, you know, togging or codding or cod fishing really. I mean, there might be a couple guys still going for cod, but no one that I know. So that leaves us with holdover striped bass and freshwater fishing. Um, holdover stripers have been good as long as, you know, as people are starting to deal with more and more skim ice now, so that's going to become more and more of a problem. We've got a lot of cold weather this week and a snowstorm possibly on the way, so uh, I would get out there and get it in while you can now. Um, we are still seeing them. We are still seeing stripers being caught, and the sizes range from, you know, little little schoolies up to you know fish just over the slot limit size. So, you know, solid fishing still going on when you get when you can find the fish. Uh, for a little bit more on things going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Hey guys, thanks, Dave. Uh, a quick video from the East Bay uh, area, South Coast, Massachusetts. Uh, had an opportunity this weekend to just do a little bit of fishing uh, and I fished in some fresh water. Um, was able to catch a couple of perch, uh, yellow perch, nothing uh, nothing too big, but uh, it was nice to just get out there and get a bite and, uh, you know, actually caught a couple of fish. They were nice. Uh, it was just an opportunity to get out, look at the water, me get outside, uh, and I hope everybody had a great new year and... Uh, you know, going forward now, a lot of things that I do during the winter to keep my mind off of, you know, like the cabin fever, as, as us uh, fishermen always say, is um, I'm starting to print out some tide charts, uh, tr cross referencing them from when I caught fish earlier this year. I just go back to my photos that are on my phone. Everything is dated and time stamped. Uh, I have it set up like that. So when I take a picture of a fish, that I caught. Uh, I know exactly what time I caught. I can go back and look at what the tide was. I can look at the tide for the upcoming year just to cross reference and say, hey, I might want to fish at th these times. Uh, and maybe check the slow lunar charts uh, too to see you know, what the best bite is or when, the, uh, when it's not a good bite. Um, the the slow lunars are a good, you know, something to base your fishing off of. And uh, I do a lot of that. I look at it. Um, it doesn't always stand up to what I think, because I think you can catch fish at any time. And uh, fish, I mean, tend to feed at, you know, when the tides are running rather than, you know, being at a slack tide. So uh, I do a lot of that research now. And uh, another thing I like to do in the winter is, is I'll go down to the Barrington River. I'll drive down there and I'll park in a spot and I literally will just watch the water flowing, uh, like, you know, through the, through the currents and then along the shore just to see like what is going on and like maybe something I missed a previous year. But we, I do a lot of studying like that because I like to go out, obviously go down and sit by the water. Um, there's no fish to catch in the salt right now. Um, so I, I do things like that and, and I get prepared for the upcoming season. And I think preparation is, is huge for a lot of us. And uh, I mean, some of us don't do it and they just go in to catch fish, I get it. But for us guys who like, this is fishing is that we love fishing. It's just something, you know, that, like I said, it's nice to get out there and do something that's going to help you maybe catch fish in the future. Um, getting to saltwater, I really didn't hear anything from any of my buddies who've been fishing in the Seekonk River for holdover striped bass or on the Providence River. I haven't heard much at all. It's been quiet. Uh, I think upcoming this week, it's been cold. There's going to be skim ice. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fish this weekend because of that, uh, because I've been fishing from shore for freshwater. Um, 
There is a, a nor'easter predicted for Sunday. Uh, not sure if, uh, if before that it'll get a little bit warmer and uh, that skim ice will be gone because it'd be a good time to fish before that on Sunday, before that storm gets here. Uh, the, the fish will probably get on the feed. Um, so uh, going further, uh, I hope everybody has a good week and uh, we hope you uh, be able to get out there and fish. And if you do, tight lines. We'll catch you next week. Hey guys, I just got back from shooting and uh, when I got home, I saw that I had this video from John Lee that I did an intro in the original. And I just wanted to make sure I got it in here because it's really cool. It deals with, you know, one of the issues that's on a lot of anglers' minds right now. And, um, you know, it's an on-the-scene uh, video. It's very, very cool. So I just wanted to make sure I got that in. So uh, without further ado, here's John. How you doing? It's John Lee, uh, JL Charters. It's Wednesday, January 3rd. I'm out here on Block Island Sound. I'm actually doing some pilot boat runs. We're just uh, north of Block Island by the 1BI buoy. There's a little fishing boat down there to my east. And we're doing a, uh, a wind boat right now. This is a uh, tug and barge unit. Those are the turbines. Those are going out to Cox's Ledge right now. And uh, we see this guy about four times a week. Um, it's hard to tell, but those blades are enormous. And this is kind of a hot topic right now in my neck of the woods and likely will be from here all the way to Florida. Um, you know, this is really gonna change things for us. And, um, you know, some people are wildly against this. Some people are a little bit more indifferent but it will affect all of us anglers included um anyway hope all is well with everyone and i will get back to you soon take care i was talking to jeff sullivan um we saw his picture this one here uh in the freshwater synopsis he's been doing really well still with the trout in rhode island water still getting some uh salmon as well um and we've seen a lot of other guys starting to get in on that it's still underutilized but we're seeing more and more guys doing it um Got some shots here from one of our readers. Got some nice trout on the kayak. Also had a salmon, not pictured here. And just overall, that freshwater trout bite has been really good in Rhode Island. It's been underutilized. And another thing that I you know, try to remind you guys a few times a year, the largemouth bass fishing in Rhode Island is a sleeper. Not a lot of guys are doing it, but it is a very productive state for largemouth bass fishing. And um, you know, if you go in and hit all those little reservoirs, you gotta check the regulations. Some of them are illegal to fish, but uh, a lot of them have really good bass fishing and a lot of them don't get a lot of pressure. And then out along the beaches, didn't hear about any more striped bass along the beaches, although, you know, anything's possible. I mean, they were there last week, so it's possible for, that, they're, that they were there this week as well. And um, that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Moving over into Connecticut, I don't know anyone who's been out on the sound. Most of the guys are up in the rivers um, fishing for various species. Uh, it's been a pretty good year so far for holdover striped bass. We're seeing some fish coming out of the Thames. We're seeing you know, more fish than I usually expect to see coming out of the backwaters of the Connecticut River. I'm sure there's some fish in, maybe in the Quinnipiac or up in the way up inside the Niantic River as well. And then, of course, the Housatonic continues to put out fish. Uh, what we heard this week from the Hoosie is that it was pretty solid, but we'll hear more about that from Max in his report. And... Um, you know, the other thing that's going on is just a lot of trout fishing in, Mass in Massachusetts, in Connecticut. Um, seeing guys fishing the rivers, we're seeing guys hitting the ponds, and, um, you know, we're definitely going to see more and more guys hitting these Seaforellon spots as well. Um, now let's just toss it over to our um, field correspondents and wrap up the Connecticut report. So we'll start things off with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, with some colder weather in the forecast, definitely some snow this weekend, a lot of us are probably waiting with bated breath to see if we're actually going to get safe ice this uh, this winter. Here's hoping, I, I personally, as much as I'm a fly fishing addict, I really like getting out and ice fishing on the coves of the Connecticut River uh, for panfish. Um, that's one of my favorite things to do. It's just a lot of fun. So here's hoping we get that. In the meantime, uh, there's a lot of skim ice forming, uh, especially early in the mornings. You're going to have some skim ice to deal with in the slack and slow spots. Uh, the holdover fishing at the mouth of the river is kind of still chugging along. The white perch have slowed down down there, uh, but are still going pretty strong up river in the coves if you can get into them, uh, either the boat or a kayak. Um, now that's about it. 
Uh, actually, that's not. Uh, the trout fishing is pretty darn good in all the tributaries. Uh, with the flows really dropping, uh, the fish really like that. I mean, the water temperatures are good as it has been warm most days. Uh, and with the flows subsiding, the fish are on the feed pretty hard. Uh, so there's plenty good trout fishing in the TMAs like the Salmon River and others. Um, but other than that, here's hoping we do get ice this year. Uh, it's looking up as is. We'll see. One thing I meant to mention, I almost skipped over it, was just talking, uh, giving you guys a little bit of a rundown of what's going on inside the Connecticut River. Um, the Connecticut River is another underutilized fishery. You've got all these coves um, and little tributaries that run in off the river and this excellent fishing up in there. I've, I've experienced it many times up in the river. There's great pickerel fishing, there's great pike fishing. You can find largemouth and smallmouth bass. You're gonna land on some stripers here and there. You're gonna find yellow perch, white perch, crappie. Um, it's, it's a phenomenal fishery that's grossly underutilized and right now when there's still no ice on it, although probably by the end of the week we'll start seeing things harden up out there, um, you can exploit that fishing from a boat, do it with jerk baits, do it with shiners, and uh, you can do quite well. Uh, next up we'll leave the river, take a little right out of the river and check in with Matt Stone over at Black Hall Outfitters. Morning everyone, Matt here at Black Hole Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Definitely down into those winter chill days right now. We've got 20s in the morning and 40s in the afternoon. Uh, there are uh, a lot of good holdover fish around. I was able to get out yesterday and despite the uh, 38 degree water, I was able to find a few fish. Um, kind of the, the all the holdover spots that you'd sort of expect, but also a lot of places you might not expect too. So definitely worth poking around if you really want to get out on the water. Um, try to see if you can spot the warmer day and a streak of colder days um, might help those fish be a little bit more active. Um, weightless soft plastics or very lightly weighted soft plastics are definitely your best bet um, for those holdover fish. For freshwater, uh, still kind of the same bite we've had um, kind of throughout winter. Um, you can throw big baits uh, and move them slow. You can troll smaller plugs, which is kind of my preferred method. Um, targeting, I like to target weed areas or kind of still typical points that you might hit during warmer weather months as well. Um, those are going to give you your best bet. Or um, you'll find that a lot of those smaller fish, uh, like panfish and things like that, might settle into a hole um, somewhere in a lake uh, or off a point, something like that. So good sonar and cyanide imaging is definitely going to help you pinpoint. Uh, winter tends to be the time of year where 10% of the lake holds 90% of the fish. Um, at least that's what I kind of find. So um, finding them is probably going to be your hardest point and then um, working them to get them to, uh, to give you those bites. Um, that's it from here in Black Hall. I uh, hope everyone has a great week. And to wrap up the Connecticut report, we'll take a little flight out to uh, Norwalk. We'll check in now with Max Finch from Fisherman's World. We've seen some bass in our Norwalk Harbor this past week. We've had some herring move in, and I talked to a couple guys getting the herring. You know, the Maritime Center docks, uh, the walkway docks upriver a little more. You can fish Norwalk Cove, and then the outflow over there, and then off the Calf Pasture Beach. A couple guys using live herring as bait. We saw some slot fish, so that was cool. And then they're still getting them on some soft plastics here and there. You gotta really put your time in locally. But other than that, all eyes are on the Housatonic. You know, the, the usual upriver haunts, your favorite soft plastic like Lunker City, NLB End, Gravity Tackles have done a lot of damage. You know, them are really popular, especially, especially their uh, nine inch and their five inch paddle tails. You know, concentrate on, you know, the upper parts. And then as, you know, we get heavy rains in the winter and the water gets really muddy, that will really turn the chew bag on for the fish. So, you know, if we get these heavy rains, the day after is usually really good when the water is murky. Thanks and good luck. And last but not least, we're going to take a longer flight now down to Paradise there. We're going to stop off at Costa Rica and check in, with, uh, check in and see what's going on at Marina Pez Vela. Guys, good morning. This is Ben Gilmore from here in Costa Rica. How you all doing? A big happy new year to everybody. The fishing report down here, guys, is red hot right now. We got a really good sailfish bite going on. Lots of boats in the double digit sailfish releases in the past week or so. There's been a few blue marlin out there, a few striped marlin also, and an amazing Dorado Mahi Mahi bite, guys. Just some of the best Dorado fishing we've had here for a long time. It's been super strong since November. We're catching a lot of big bulls now. 20, 30 pounders, very common. There was a 55 pounder caught yesterday down here. A little further out, guys, kind of 25, 30 miles out, we're finding some yellowfin tuna as well. And there's been a couple of big hog wahoo caught over the last week as well. Inshore along the beaches, there's some snook, snappers, and rooster fish as well, guys. Just check out the weather down here, guys. Absolutely beautiful. Please come down and see us soon. This is Ben Gilmore and the Marina Pez Vela. 
that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Uh, you know, still pretty good fishing going on. It's getting colder. We're going to start dealing with more and more ice, but um, no reason to give up just yet. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You get a full taste of what we offer there for free. And, uh, you know, we cover everything from Delaware all the way up to Maine. We cover saltwater, freshwater, offshore, inshore, surf. It's, it's all covered. Kayak, paddleboard, doesn't matter. We do it all. And um, we also have reports that cover that entire region. So check that out. It costs $29.95 for the year. You're also going to get a free gift and a $20 Surehold gift card. Or if you come and see us at one of the shows, you get that plus an iPop popper from Tsunami. But if you're still not interested in checking that out, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.